In this video, you're going to learn about different DNA combinations that make up some of the best French Bulldogs that you see on the market today, as well as how they can create these beautiful combinations as a breeder for your program or as a pet. Make sure you stick around at the end because I'm going to tell you a very important story about my learning experience when I first started getting into French Bulldogs that will save you thousands of dollars and years of wasted development of your breeding program. Hi. I'm Aaron with Laron Frenchies and welcome to my channel and this video. As you all may know, I've been breeding dogs for almost 20 years with a specialty in French Bulldogs over the past four plus years. In my opinion, this is one of the most beautiful and smart breeds in the world and that's exactly what drew me to them. All the different variations and overall improvement of the look and temperament of French Bulldogs has made it one of the top, if not the top breed in the world over the past decade plus. Make sure you subscribe and click on notifications if you like this video and are interested in future videos that will add value to your life as a dog owner in general, or if you're curious about owning a French Bulldog in the future. When I first got into breeding French Bulldogs, I really didn't know anything about DNA and how it is used to both ensure only the best genetics were used to breed these animals, create some magnificent combinations of offspring, and most importantly to ensure that the offspring don't have any genetic issues that affect both the lifespan and quality of life of this incredible breed. There are many great companies out there that you can send off a blood sample or tissue sample to in order to receive the exact DNA of your dog. These companies do a great job of breaking down the different genetic characteristics of your dog so you know exactly what you have and what you can produce. In my case, I've always used Animal Genetics out of Tallahassee, Florida, but there are other great options. If you have the opportunity to remove the dew claws of your newborn puppies, this is one of the best options to get a sample to them as it will take about two weeks to get the results back via email. The reason why a breeder might want to do this is because there are DNA combinations that are rarer and a lot more valuable than others, which we will get into now. Let's use Storm's DNA for reference here as I go over a few key points. If your dog carries one copy of a specific genotype, then they are considered carriers of that particular gene. This means that they can pass it on to their offspring. If they carry two copies of the same phenotype, then you will visually see the trait in the dog as well as giving every offspring at least one copy of that particular gene, depending on the other parent. As you can see by Storm's DNA profile, she carries two copies of Tan Points, two copies of Coco, two copies of Dilute or Blue, one copy of Mask, one copy of Cream, and one copy of Long Fur. Sometimes you will see breeders say no pied and no brindle in their dog, and this is represented in Storm's DNA as little in little in or KYKY for the K locus that causes brindle or little in little in for the S locus that causes pied. You will usually see breeders and dog owners refer to her particular DNA as being a lilac fluffy carrier with tan points. Before we continue, I wanted to explain to you all my vision of the DNA I wanted in my camp and how I had to be selective in choosing an offspring to get me there. I want to share with you all the DNA of Storm's mom, Lexi, and the DNA of her dad, Louie. Of course, I could have skipped the line and paid upwards of $40,000 at the time to get all the DNA that I wanted, but that wasn't quite in the budget. And it was also clear I needed years of experience to learn more about this breed before investing that way. What I was looking for from the Lexi and Louie offspring was a puppy that carried both a copy of long fur as well as a copy of cream. Based on the DNA that I was dealing with, she was the genetic lottery from this litter that could help me produce short, stocky puppies in the future that could help me realize my ultimate vision of eventually producing visual, fluffy, new shade Isabellas. In order to get to that point, I just need to introduce testable chocolate into my program and then breed that offspring with a stud with two copies of testable chocolate. I also wanted to point out something extremely important when it comes to Merle dogs and I will use Lexi's DNA to demonstrate. Breeders beware. As you can see, Lexi is a Merle dog and this is represented visually in her coat and her genetics for that particular phenotype as little n big M, giving her one copy of Merle which she can pass on to any offspring. If you have a dog that has a copy of Merle, you can never breed them to another Merle dog as this will surely cause catastrophic health issues with any offspring that receives two copies of the Merle phenotype, including permanent blindness in the puppy. All right, back to the good stuff. 
So how exactly am I going to produce a visual fluffy new shade Isabella puppy? Well, for starters, let's put up Mr. Blanco's DNA with storms so we can chart potential productions from this litter. Let's put together a chart to show potential combinations they can throw to get me there. Then we can work on probabilities of which puppy I would want to keep to get me closer to my vision in the next generation of offspring from them. We will also reference another chart to demonstrate all the genetics necessary to produce such a puppy. As you can see on the chart, it takes quite a bit of a combination of the right genetics to produce the desired puppy. I did a selective breeding with Mr. Blanco because not only is he a great looking dog, but he has the genetics I wanted to help me realize my vision in the future without having to buy my way into the DNA. We can get into the math of it all later, but the combination of him being a visual fluffy with two copies of cream, the all important copy of testable chocolate, two copies of tan points and two copies of dilute gene can create an offspring that can hit the genetic lottery for my camp. The Color My Frenchie app is a great resource you can use to plug in your sire and dame's DNA and give you potential odds of creating such offspring. Just to keep it as simple as I can, let's use the phenotype that creates visual cream, little e, little e. Mr. Blanco has two copies of cream and Storm has one copy of cream. Just keep in mind, this works on probability. It's not an absolute. Using a Punnett square, you can just take the two copies of cream from Mr. Blanco and the one copy from Storm. When you multiply those two together, you get a 50% probability that any puppy in that litter will be a visual cream. It does not mean that if you have eight puppies in a litter that four offspring will be visual cream puppies, but it is both possible and probable that this can occur. It can be more or less. The same math can be used for calculating the probability of an offspring from these two being a visual fluffy as Mr. Blanco carries two copies of fluffy and Storm has one copy, giving each puppy a 50% chance to be a visual fluffy. The math gets a little more complicated and the probabilities get lower as you start stacking these characteristics together if you are wanting something more specific. For example, if you wanted to know the probability that an offspring would be both a visual fluffy that is also a visual cream, then that probability would be a 25%. As you combine more phenotypes, the odds become lower and lower. Although I'm looking for a specific DNA combination, I still want to have more of a variety of colors in my litter. If you wanted to guarantee certain visual characteristics of your offspring, you would simply have to be sure both those parents carry two copies of that particular phenotype. Sure. There are great looking dogs that have outstanding structure and conformation, and this should be heavily considered when breeding to other dogs. But you can't breed DNA into a dog if it's not present in either of the parents. The DNA combinations are what make some versions of this breed more expensive than others. And for the very best breeders out there, they knock it out the park with some of the best structure you will find and having rare DNA combinations that will assure they can produce consistent, great looking offspring over and over. As promised, I wanted to share a story with you all about my ignorance about French Bulldogs when I first started out, which costed me thousands of dollars and a few years of potential production. See, nobody ever told me about DNA and how it is used particularly with this breed of dog. I spent $5,000 on my first female French Bulldog back in 2019 and was excited to watch her grow into maturity. About six months into having her, I was ready to start planning out her first breeding over the next year, so I paid $3,000 as a stud credit to one of the first visual fluffy dogs on the market off of just pictures of the dog because he was so gorgeous. Stupid! So in completely backwards fashion, I was $8,000 invested into a future breeding, then decided to do more research. As I kept learning more and more about the breed, I stumbled across some breeders that were stressing the importance of having a DNA profile on your dog. I decided to send a sample on my female to Animal Genetics and was floored when the results came back and showed that she tested positive for not one, but two genetic defects in her DNA. Although this doesn't guarantee that any offspring would carry these genetic defects, that probability of creating one was too much for me to bear. I ended up selling her for a third of what I paid for her to a good family that just wanted a pet. 
as I became more curious about DNA, I decided to then ask what I should have already asked to the breeder that I purchased a $3,000 stud credit on before I ever gave any money, only to find out that his dog also carried two copies of a genetic defect, and I was completely floored. At this point, I actually wanted to give up and quit. I took a huge L on losing out on money spent, as well as having to go out with new information and restart the entire process. You can't or shouldn't even produce puppies with a dame until she's at least 15 to 24 months. So it set my entire program and vision back two full years. Another L. This is why testing DNA in French Bulldogs is so important. And before you even get to the different genetics, make sure the dog is at least four panel health cleared and the owner can prove it by sending a copy of their DNA report. This also falls into how to properly vet your breeder which is a video I will have for you at a later time, but I don't want anyone suffering the way I have and taking that kind of financial and time loss. Take it from me, it's worth the time and investment to do the DNA first. If you like this video, please subscribe and comment, and I look forward to more videos in the future about my French Bulldogs and more specifically documenting Storm's progression through her pregnancy before she delivers what should be an absolutely beautiful litter of puppies in May. Thanks for watching.